Hello everyone and this is a very simple tutorial on how to use the guide geometry input for uh, rigid body solvers. So what I have is I have a simple box which is like you know up here and uh, I used a RBD material fracture to break it up so that's what I have and then uh, I did a subdivide uh, and a bilinear subdivide so just to add like you know segments into it and then I have an animated bend which basically does this. So what we want is what the guide geometry does is that using this bend we can sort of art direct our, uh, our uh, rigid body simulation. Okay so if you want the rigid body simulation to sort of bend and break like this in this direction then you can use the guide geometry input for that. So how it works is we can take uh, RBD bullet solver and uh, we'll plug in all these three inputs. So this is the base geometry. These are the constraints that will generate automatically. And then this is the proxy geometry. Uh, what I've done with the constraints is the option is inbuilt into the RBD material fracture. If you come to the final tab, there's constraints over there. And I've just uh, lowered the primary strength to 25. By default, it's like 10,000. Okay, so I've just lowered that 25. Okay, so I can just connect all three. And then in the last input, it says guide sim. Okay, so you just plug that in. And if we do a basic uh, simulation right now, so I can just come into collisions and I'll turn on the ground. And if I press play, then nothing will happen. Except for, you know, like however strong your uh, glue is, that is that is all that you'll get. So if I just sort of disconnect the glue, then you'll just get this thing kind of collapsing. So the thing is, how do you get it to follow the, the guide geometry? Okay, so you have to do a bunch of things for this. Like it's, you'd think like you can just turn on enable guides and it will be enough, but it usually isn't. Okay, because if, even if I turn that on and I press play, it still just does the what it was doing before. I'll just put in the glue for now so that it doesn't like collapse immediately. Okay, so what you need to do is come into advanced and if you scroll down, you will find something called guide. And the most important thing you need to do is you need to turn off this, which is use pre-configured setup. I don't know what it does, but this is what is stopping this input from working. Okay, so if I press play now, you'll see that it follows the guide. Okay, so this is a decent first step. Okay, of like we finally at least have it sort of bending and breaking. But if I turn off the glue, you'll notice like the big issue that we have right now is that it breaks and then it just sort of like stays in that position, you know, beyond beyond which it doesn't move. Okay, like uh, so how do you how do we make sure that it you know after it bends it should sort of fall down? So what you need to do is you need to turn on this button which says release on end frame. Okay, so just turn that on. And our animation is about 36 frames. So I'll say release on 30. And now if you press play, this is what will happen. So at around 30, it will get released from the bend and it will fall. But it doesn't look very natural, but at least, you know, now it's not stuck in that position. Okay, now uh, you have a bunch of other things you can do. One of the simplest you can do is uh, you have this option for blend. Okay, so if we turn on blend and what I can do is I can just animate the blend, like just to show you a comparison between these things. Okay, so I'll just do a copy paste here. So I have like two rigid body solvers and what I'll do is I'll just zoom out. I'll keep I'll take this one and I'll just move it ahead you know, like let's say here so we can see the difference and what I'll also do is I'll duplicate this transform put the bend over there so we can say see it with our guide geometry so I'll merge these two together and I'll merge I'll merge these two together so this is my original and then this is you know the the, the new one so if I press play and right now there are no changes in this, so they both should just look the same. 
Okay, so what we're going to do is let's just animate the blend value. So I'll turn off uh, the simulation and we'll just do alt click on the first frame and then we'll come to around 24 and go down to zero. And if I just simulate this, so what will happen is like this one, you'll start to see it, you know, it will sort of gradually stop following the guide over time. Okay, so what will happen is as you can see here, see this is, it's already starting to collapse at this point. And this one is still following the guide. So it feels a bit more natural with this as compared to that, which sort of remains rigid and then it sort of suddenly collapses. This one sort of falls down a bit more gently. So animating the blend is a really useful thing. Okay, so uh, along with this, there are a bunch of other things that you can do, which is if you come to the guide tab, okay, and then you have like a bunch of things here, you have linear threshold, angular threshold. Okay, so let's just turn these off. And let's say, uh, like if I if I don't turn on anything, like, and if I just press play, the result you'll get will be like this. Okay, like it just sort of follows it and does not do anything. So if you do linear threshold, it's basically what it means is that after a value or a distance of 0.85, it will stop following the guide. Okay, so if you just press play, you'll see that after a while, it'll kind of try to break away from it. See, like after that distance, it sort of, you know, stops doing what it's doing. Okay, but it's also like, because we have, uh, you know, the release frame available here, that's also why it's kind of working. Okay, but along with this, the angular threshold works better. So beyond a value of eight degrees, okay, it will stop following. Okay, so that will also give you a better result. So if I press play, see, so this is completely rigid, it's it's following. But see, you, over here, you can see like after it reaches like this particular piece, after it reaches like eight degrees, it sort of like, you know, releases the whole thing. Okay. Now, along with that, you can also turn on distance threshold. So if the distance threshold is too low, it won't do anything. Like it just falls right there. Like it just won't follow the guide. Like if I, and if I keep it too high, then it will follow it, you know, a fair bit. See, so if you take all of this and you combine it with the uh, animated blend that we have, then you will get a much more sort of better and realistic result. Like one of the things I also realized is like, it has something called accumulated thresholds as well. And I realized that uh, using the angular threshold, like the accumulated angular threshold works a little better. Okay, so that piece, which was a little more vertical here, like if you look at this, like that piece, it remains sort of like stuck for a while. But if I do it with angular threshold, it kind of, it doesn't really do that. See, it's sort of like, let's go. Like I'll just turn off the blend for now. So angular threshold works a little better than this. See, this is a much better result, but that looks a little weird then. <laughs> okay, and then along with that, we can sort of play with the distance threshold and you sort of combine those two things together. And yeah, the distance threshold we need, let's keep it slightly higher. Yeah, so kind of just, you know, figure out the values, but this is what you need to do. Yeah, so I think what we can do is let's just keep these two things off and we'll just keep the blend on. So I think those three things combined should be a little bit better. Yeah, so anyways, that's pretty much it. Okay, so just to recap, like the first and foremost thing you need to remember is uh, turn on enable guides here and then come to advanced, turn off use pre-configured script and turn on release on end frame. Okay, like these two things or these three things will be enough to get you started. Then you just sort of play around with the blend value and whatever and you will get, you know, a decent result. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. So that's how you can use 
the guide input in the rigid body solver. 